Now, we're going to explore this idea with a new Olympic event called Dueling Syringes. And I need some, I need some, are you too willing to volunteer for this? Come on up. Okay. Okay, Elizabeth, would you stand facing, what's your name? Bennett. Bennett, okay. And uh, this is the way we're going to play this. I've got two syringes that are connected with a tube filled with water. Each of these syringes are partially filled with water. When I push on one plunger, it pushes the other plunger out, okay? And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to hand each of these individuals a plunger. They can each use a single thumb. When I say go, their goal is to push theirs all the way in so that the other one goes out. Okay? Are you willing to play this? Okay. Are you ready? Okay, only one thumb, and wait until I say go. Ready, set, go. Whoa, Bennett, you won. Oh, dude. Now you've come to expect that these things are rigged. If I turn this around and give Elizabeth the large plunger, one, two, three, go. Yeah, she loses this time. Okay. Whoever's got the large, let's give them a hand, folks. You could have done better than that. Whoever has the large plunger is going to lose. Okay. And that's because if they create the same pressure right next to their plunger, it's going to be a tie. No water's going to go to the left, no water's going to go to the right. But that's if the pressure's the same. But the pressure is the force divided by the area. So that means whoever's got the bigger area of the plunger has to provide a bigger force just to tie. If the ratio of the areas is four to one, that means Bennett would have to push with his thumb four times harder just to tie. Now this is how we uh, make uh, hydraulic equipment work. Let's say I want to lift a car and it's going to take a force of a thousand pounds. Well, I can't push with a thousand pounds, but I can push with a hundred pounds on a good day. So what I do is I set up a reservoir. I wouldn't fill this with water because that's going to rust everything, but maybe some kind of oil. And this reservoir would have a a, a cross-sectional area that's ten times that of this one, okay? And that means, since the pressure at the surface is going to be the same, the same depth, that means if I look at the force, if this one has ten times the area, I'm going to get ten times the force. Now think about <clears throat> that. If I push with 100 pounds down, that plunger there pushes up with 1,000 pounds. I push with 100 pounds, I get 1,000 pounds. That sounds like free lunch. Whenever I get something for nothing, I get a little nervous. What's the catch here? Why is this not free lunch? Yes, sir? Is it because it also puts that pressure on all the sides? It does put it on all the sides, but it does give me ten times the force pushing up. Where's the catch? You have to push farther than the car moves. Yes, if this plunger here goes up one inch, well, i got to fill all that area underneath it with liquid, whatever oil you got in here. That means i got to push my plunger down ten inches. So that means my force times my distance is equal to my force times my distance. Force times distance. That sounds familiar. What's that? Or Verk. The Verk in is equal to the Verk out. My 100 pounds times 10 inches is going to give me 1,000 pounds times 1 inch. I don't get something for nothing. I trade force for distance. Okay? If I want a bigger force, I've got to push a bigger distance. But that's worth it to me because I need that force. 
Now in practice, you would actually put point B lower in the liquid so that you already start out with a higher pressure there to support the weight of the actual device. Okay? Now on the exam, the final exam, any question about Pascal's principle would be a qualitative one, an easy one, just checking to see if you understand the basic idea. It wouldn't be a huge calculation.